Hey, good evening and Merry Christmas. Would you stand with us? It's great to see you. Are you ready to sing? Let's lift our voices together. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. We will sing, sing, sing. Sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound in joy. And makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders one. Sin, he came to 
to bear Emmanuel, God with us Emmanuel, King Jesus Savior of the world is born Emmanuel, God with us Emmanuel, King Jesus Savior of the world is born Go tell it
together as a family, to celebrate who you are and what you've done for us as you went on your rescue mission to save that which was lost. You came to seek and save that which was lost, and that was us. And we're so grateful to you, God, for your salvation, for forgiving us of our sins, for making a way where there was no way. We are just so grateful tonight for the peace that we have in your presence. Amen. Aren't you grateful? Come on, can you give the Lord a sound of praise? Just gratitude. God is good. God is good. All the time. God is good. Why don't you take a moment and say hi to the people around you, and then you can have your seats. Everybody and Merry Christmas. Anybody excited that it's Christmas this weekend? Come on, somebody. We want to welcome everybody to our Christmas service here at Calvary. We are so excited that you are with us, that you are joining us, whether you are watching online or here in the house. We want you to know that, that you are part of something significant. People all over the world this very uh, this very weekend are celebrating that God broke into human history as a baby boy named Jesus. And it's in that name that we find hope and life and the true meaning of love. And tonight before you leave, we hope that you are filled with life. You're filled with hope in that name as you enjoy the music, as you listen to a message from our lead pastor, Pastor John. And so thank you for being here and visiting with us if this is your first time. If this is your first time, whether you're watching online or here in the house, thank you so much. Whether somebody invited you or you just decided to check us out on your own, thank you so much. It's a privilege that you are here. If you are watching online for the very first time, a digital connect card is popping up. We would love for you to fill that out. We would love to connect with you. Uh, even though you're watching digitally, we would love to still connect with you. And so fill that out. If you want a gift sent in the mail, please click that option. We have guests right now, chat hosts, uh, that are going to be um, uh, hanging out with you throughout the service and connecting with you. Whether uh, If you are here in the house, uh, we would also love to connect with you. If you are a first-time guest behind several of the seats, you can find this green card. We would love for you to fill that out. And before you leave, you can drop that off at any of our welcome centers in the lobby. Or also, uh, you can drop this off at any of our new giving 
uh, stations throughout the auditorium and drop that off and somebody will be in, in contact with you uh, very, very soon. And also throughout the lobby, we have free cookies, free coffee, come on somebody, free hot chocolate. Please take some of that before you go. But also we have, um, again, several of the uh, walls, we have some guest boxes, some gifts for you just for visiting, a, a thank you from us to you. Please grab that and we hope that we get to serve you and your family very soon. Well, as we begin our Christmas service, another way that you can worship with us tonight is in the area of giving. We want to say thank you in advance for your generosity as you partner with us, as we're partnering with, with God to make a difference here in the triad and nationally and globally through our missionary partners. So if you would like to give, there's several ways you can do so. Even tonight, uh, before you go, there's some envelopes uh, behind several of the seats. You can fill that out. You can drop that off at our new giving stations against the walls by the doors. Um, also, you can conveniently also give online anytime at Calvary Triad dot church slash give and the most convenient way is the text to give you can text your amount to eight four three two one well that's enough uh, for me thank you once again for being here and welcome home i don't know about this it looks like a girl's hair there you go Perfect. Oh no. All right, guys. Guys, we're putting on a Christmas play. If you haven't noticed. So, but we need a director and he'll be here shortly. I haven't noticed. Okay. So we've got, I think we've got everybody dressed, everybody's got a part, and obviously that's where the play is going to take place. So we have different scenes that we'll go through. While you're not in a scene, you're just over here hanging out, okay? So you'll notice there are some cameras around. You can look at them or you cannot, up to you, okay? Just be yourself and have a good time. So uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to go see where the director is. <laughs> Say what's I'll put him. I got him. I got him. Hello? Hello? Um, you. Where are my actors? I am your director. Oh, you. My yes. name is. Hi, Mr. Clayton. Who is this, Mr. Clayton? You. You. My name is Louis. 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 Mr. Louis. 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 Clayton. Close enough. Are you ready for the Christmas play? Okay, stage hand one. Stand. Hold in the mountains. Do the mountains move? Oh. Yes. No. Does the star move? No. Yes. The star twinkles? Yes. You must twinkle the star. No. Twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle. Very nice, very nice. And action. Walking place, trees go by. Joseph, look at your wife, your fiance. Say this. You're walking, you're walking. <laughs> Sailor, put the tree down. Grab the ability. Oh, I'm pregnant. Cut, cut. Good job. Good job, everyone. So I'm with Caden Brooks, and uh, Caden was one of our stagehands in the production. So, Caden, I wanted to ask you when you were. Um... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. That's embarrassing. You are really good at this. You're a sneaky boy. I had a question for you, Kaden. Your stagehand one. What was the, what was the toughest part of being a stagehand for, uh, for this production? Hold on, just a second. What was that? I had to hold mountains. You had to hold mountains. Why was that so difficult? Because it was heavy. Mm, I bet mountains. They seem heavy. 
I was looking for your counterpart. I wanted to ask her a question, stagehand number two. Do you know where she is? Over here. I'm not falling for that again. That's ridiculous. Serious. Oh my goodness. You guys are so good at your jobs. We really got the A-listers for this. Uh, so, Sayla, right? Sayla Jefferson. Mm -hmm. What, um, take off your mask so we can hear you talk. What was, uh, what was it like working with the world-renowned director, Louis Calvario? Fun. It was fun? Yeah. Care to elaborate? What does that mean? <laughs> Care to share a little bit more about the experience? It was tough. Ooh, what was tough about it? Opening the door. Opening the door. Was Louis Calvario helpful for you as a director? Sort of. Uh, was there any confusion? I noticed at some points you weren't quite sure what to do. Was it the accent? All of it. All of it? Okay. Action! Joseph and Mary enter the scene. Knock on the door. The door opens wide, wide, open wide. Can we stay here? Mary's about to leave for it. There's no room. There's a stable out back. Okay, Joseph, take Mary. Follow the innkeeper to the stable. Nope. Outside the end. There she goes. To the stable. All the way to the stable. Off the scene. Perfecto! Cut! Perfecto, everyone! Good job! Earth and mercy, mild God and sin. 
almost gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The savior of humanity Unto us a child is born He shall reign forevermore No At that time, the Roman Emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who is now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger 
because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has just happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And to his government and peace there shall be no end. Merry Christmas.
smiled at me Pum 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 Me and my dream Vision something without conflict. Peace involves that, but there's so much more. Peace is a restored state of wholeness. The birth of Jesus announces the arrival of peace, and the death of Jesus creates peace with God. And when the angels proclaim peace on earth, the shepherds heard what our hearts long to hear that God is indeed restoring all of it to his original and glorious purposes. So may we experience that kind of peace. It's an invitation for every person, and it's here now because Jesus is here now. This is peace. Can you imagine that day, that night that the shepherds had one job? They were there to protect the sheep, right? They were there in that that field late at night, and all of the sudden, out of nowhere, this angel appears. And the Bible says in the verse that we read earlier from Luke chapter 2 that they were terrified. I can relate. This morning, how many of you understand? We had some wind in the place, right? It was a little bit crazy. Kids that are right in front, when the storm comes at night, does anybody get a little bit afraid? You guys just wave at me, so I'm, on, I'm not alone, right? Okay, yeah, and some of you, like there is those moments when you get really scared when things don't go the way they seem like they should. These shepherds had this moment where peace was the farthest thing from their mind. They had one job to protect the sheep, and yet this moment came, and the Bible says that they were terrified, and just like these kids have said, boy, sometimes there are things that happen in our lives where we get, we get afraid. Peace seems like it's the furthest thing from us. This morning, it was one of those moments, even at our house, when the wind outside is blowing and the trees are, are bending and some breaking, and it's this moment where we need protection. This moment thousands of years ago when these shepherds had a, had, a, had a job to protect the sheep, they were terrified. These angels came and they said, we bring peace. You see, there's this idea of peace in this Christmas story that's significant and you cannot miss it. And it's this, this partnership between peace and protection. There's no, there's no coincidence that in this moment that the shepherds were there to protect the sheep. They're, they're fearful, they're terrified, and the angels reassure them. The angel first, and then the, the, the multitude reassures them 
with peace. The shepherds, they were guarding their flocks. The angels then came and the shepherds had this moment where they recognized not just the one angel, but then the Bible says that there was a multitude of angels. It says suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven, talk about protection, right? Praising God and saying glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. If you're like me, there are those moments in our lives when when that peace seems very distant. There may be things that happen in our lives. Maybe it's not a physical storm that we endure on the outside, but there's relational storms. There's there's different things happening within us that, that, boy, all we really need is is peace. And for me, I know that there are those moments, even this morning, it was such a cool illustration with with the storm blowing. Can I tell you that the house that we were in, we were sitting in front of the fire, the power had gone out, right? But it was was warm and we were safe inside. The storm outside did not stop, but we had peace because of the protection of that house. And the truth of it is, is at the very beginning of this story of this little baby, named Jesus, we have a picture of the protection of God through his son that brings us peace. It's a story that goes on throughout throughout generations that we see this story of this this little baby that grows and then is is the, the, the man Jesus who we see as this example of perfection that God provides that peace and protection for us. The Bible talks about this idea of shelter so many different ways. It's really incredible to to understand that God in this peace, when we allow ourselves to be under his covering, we have peace. The psalmist writes in Psalm 31, verse 20, you hide them in the shelter of your presence. He also says that we can be safe beneath the shelter of your wings. How precious is your unfailing love, O God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. When my wife and I were dating, there were these moments that uh, we, we just grew in these, obviously, in our, our attraction and feelings to each other. It was just the growth of love there. But I just remember there was these moments that, that there was just a, an embrace, and, and, and I would whisper to her. In fact, I even did that this morning. I just hugged her, and I said, you're covered. And there's this feeling of security and safety when even physically, maybe as, as kiddos, our moms and dads cover us. The storm may not go away, but we're covered and we're protected. And I'm just here to tell you today, all of, 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 of us that maybe have already entered into that relationship with Jesus, that spiritually, that's what God does. The Bible says that we take upon ourselves his righteousness. In one portion of scripture, it says it's almost like a clothing or covering over us, and it brings us peace because that peace provides protection. The peace that God gives to us, it does. It provides shelter from the storms. It provides this covering from all of our faults and weaknesses. It's as if God's saying, hey, you're you're not good enough on your own, but I'm gonna cover you. I'm gonna provide peace through my son Jesus to protect you from the storm, to cover your fault, and quite honestly, to heal from wounds in the past. This peace that God gives to us is the solution to the protection that so many times we, we, we fail to see and fail to realize in our lives. Author that I'm reading uh, recently, Dallas Willard, says this, the soul of man, if it can acknowledge its wounded condition, it shows amazing capacities for recovery when it finds its home in God and receives his grace. This Prince of Peace Jesus came to protect you, came to provide that shelter, that covering of your sin, of the storm, of your weakness. This is peace. Today, I'm not sure where you are at in your journey with the Lord, but we're going to pray together. And the greatest thing that we could give to you at this season 
would be peace, not just physical peace, but spiritual peace and knowing that you are covered by the grace of God. I don't, it doesn't matter how old or young you are in this room, that there's this moment where you can recognize the peace that God offers you through his son, Jesus. Jesus, this Prince of Peace came to change our lives. He is the peace that provides protection for us. Would you do me a favor tonight? Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes in this room today, tonight? And I just would love to pray for you tonight that God would just show his peace so strongly and clearly in your lives tonight. Father, I pray for the men and women and boys and girls in this room God, you would just be peace. In those, those struggling, trying times, Father, that we may find ourselves in, we may find ourselves even tonight in a position where we, we sing songs about this, this baby Jesus and, and understand this man Jesus, and, and we talk about it, and yet sometimes we find ourselves in a position that our lives are outside of the covering that this peace provides. Father, I pray that you would just just nudge our hearts to the point where we could respond to the peace of God that you are offering to us tonight. I'm gonna ask you just to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'd love to pray together with you if you're here in this room tonight. And you say, Pastor John, this is a, a moment that I, I just, I've never asked Jesus to be that provider of peace and protection in my life. And tonight may be the night that you are saying, you know what, I'd love for you to include me in this prayer to invite Jesus to be that peace in my life. The Bible says that every one of us have, have sin in our lives and that we've fallen short of God's glory and that the only way to restore that right relationship, that covering with the Lord is for us to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I know you paid the price for those and I, I ask for your forgiveness be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I'd love to pray with you tonight on this Christmas weekend that you would have that peace. If you would say, Pastor John, would you just include me in that prayer tonight? Would you do me the honor of just being able to recognize you? All heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you just lift your hand in this room tonight and let me pray with you? I'll, I'll just wait just for a few seconds. It would be a shame for us to miss an opportunity to introduce you to the Prince of Peace tonight. Anybody tonight? Just let me see your hand real quick in the room. I see you. Thank you so much. In the back, you can put it down. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. 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 Church, all over this room, would you do me and these that may have raised their hands? And I, I've seen a few in the room tonight, but maybe you didn't and you would just say, you know what? I want to pray this prayer. Church, all over this room, would you do uh, us the honor of just introducing uh, these friends of ours to Jesus by saying this prayer with me today? All over this room, let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I need your peace in my life. Thank you for forgiving me. I want to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's an honor for us to introduce you to the Prince of Peace. One of the ways that we can just further that connection, you heard Pastor G earlier mention the connect cards. If you prayed that prayer tonight for the first time, we would love to walk this journey out with you even further. That connect card helps us do that. Well, I tell you what, it's really hard to follow the drummer boy presentation. That was tremendous. And then the kids tonight, we're, we're not even done yet. There's some more stuff, trust me, that we've got some fun opportunities for us to just worship the Lord tonight. You know, when we talk about this uh, idea of peace, the Bible says that Jesus was the light of the world, right? And there's these moments that we can have to just uh, celebrate the fact that when you have Jesus in your heart, there is a light within you that dispels the darkness. And so as you have come in tonight, you have received the candles. I'm going to ask you just to take those. And then I need everybody, especially moms and dads, if you'll help me with all the kiddos in the room, right? Um, we're going to have a moment. Some of you will understand this in a minute. You're going to want 
want to take the selfies and all that, and that's going to be great. But there is this spiritual um, uh, picture that you're going to have here in just a minute of the light dispelling darkness in the room. And so it's going to be really important for us to do a little bit of, uh, uh, of training on proper candle lighting technique here tonight. So here's the rule of thumb. The pastoral staff in a minute are going to help me light these candles, and they're going to help light your candles. Here's just an easy rule of thumb for you to, to remember. If your candle has a flame on it and it's lit, it needs to stay straight up and down. If your candle is not lit, then you are the one that turns it sideways to light your candle on the lit candle. So everybody understand. Everybody just kind of shake their hands. You understand. Some of the moms and dads understand the mess that we might make if we don't follow those instructions really carefully. And then you can follow along. Pastoral staff will give you the cue when you can blow those out. And uh, it'll, it'll just be this moment that we can just uh, we can celebrate the light of the world. Amen? Has this been a fun night? Amen. I'm so excited to, that you're here uh, tonight. We're going to have a few more memories that we'll create with you uh, at the end. We're going to have some fun. But tonight, there is this moment where we can recognize that he is, he is the light of the world. And he brings peace for every one of us tonight. And I'm so grateful for this little baby Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. It's an amazing sight up here. You know, Matthew says that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And so this Christmas season, what an amazing representation of what God has called each and every one of us to, to be and to do, and that would be that light. Amen? I see some of you already doing it. Can I just give you permission to take the selfie right now, and you can do that with your family? Don't, don't feel like you're being disrespectful at all. In fact, that would be fine, and that would be great. I see, yep, my daughter's doing it over there. There you go. That would be great. Moms and dads, we've got a, one more, uh, actually two more things here. So can you do me a favor and help carefully blow these candles out and hold them straight up so we don't have wax on the floor and be seated just for a few more moments. We need to check in on the remainder of the nativity story. God bless you as you're seated just for a few more moments. Watch. I do this before, okay? I'm very good at this. Why do you have a wig on? See, see? You must do like this. Action! First, no animals yet. First, Mary looks lovingly at the baby. Kiss the baby on the forehead. And puts the baby in the manger. Gently, gently. Joseph pats the baby on the forehead. Once or twice, maybe. You know, I love pat. First animal crawls in to see the baby. Second animal crawls in to see the baby. Third animal, fourth animal. They're coming from all over. Uh, my question for you is what was your inspiration for the role? What is the key to making us all believe that you're actually Mary herself? Ah, uh, they're both girls. That's a good point. So you're telling me that I could never be Mary in What was it like working with the director? Was he helpful at all for the production? You were the director. The, the director, Louis Calvario. What was it like working with director Louis? Um, it was nice. Oh, terrible good. accent. A terrible accent? Yeah, and, okay. you're, and you were him. Now, I do, I do you, get that a lot, but I don't know anything up, about directing. You ask him. I can tell. Thank you, Gentry. <laughs> Shepherds, you are sitting like this on the ground. Just a chill. How about this? Where is the baby lamb? Oh. You yeah, can, just, uh, kneel? Yeah, can you just uh, be like an animal, please, for one second? Can I just do this? You must kneel? Yes. You could even uh, lay down on your side. No, you just kneel. And action. Just be a shepherd. Everything's fine. Talk to your shepherd friends. Sheep, turn towards the camera. Smile. You're a happy sheep because you have three shepherds. You fall back, you're scared. You're afraid. <laughs> Angel, hold your hands forward. Say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Louder. Don't be afraid. They can't hear you. Louder. Don't be afraid. I bring good news. I bring good news. That will bring great joy. That will bring great joy. To all people. To all people. The Savior. The Savior. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord. Has been born today. Has been born today. In Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. The city of David. The city of David. David. Oh. Glory to God in high heaven. Uh, peace on earth. Peace, peace on, on earth. earth. To those with whom God is pleased. To those to whom God is pleased. We must go to Bethlehem. We must go to Bethlehem. Go, run to Bethlehem. <laughs> I'm slow. Go, quick, all the way over there, what over there, to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Wise men, take your gifts and lay them at the feet. Of Jesus, and, uh, uh, get on your knees. then go back behind and stand in place.
and look down at the baby Jesus. Isn't he beautiful? Get ready, get ready to stay off the scene. Sing, sing. got to be pretty tough, I would imagine, nerve-wracking to play a role that has such a high demand, such pressure on it. I uh, was wondering if you could give us like a window or a glimpse into what it takes, what kind of conviction, preparation it takes to play such an important role in a Christmas production. Okay, well, I guess you give a guy the part of baby Jesus and it goes to his head. Thank you everybody, Merry Christmas. Howdy. Howdy. Hey, we have the best kids here at Calvary, don't we? We got great kids. We're gonna do one more song and this is gonna be it for the rest of the night. Then you can go have a Merry Christmas. There's a little tradition of mine that this might be one of the last times I can sing this because I don't live in Texas anymore. I live in North Carolina. And I'm very happy to be here. But I spent a long time in Texas and we never had a white Christmas. How many of you have actually had a white Christmas? Let me see. You lucky dogs. Must be nice. So I wrote a song a long time ago. Uh, sounds like White Christmas, but it's called Dreaming in Texas. And I just wanted to take you to Texas with me for about five minutes. And we'll try to make it snow or something. It goes like this. I'm dreaming of white Christmas Just like the ones I've never known When you live in Texas, the best that you get is some rain and maybe ice, but not real snow and not real snow. So I'm still dreaming of that white Christmas. With every year that passes by When the temp breaks 75 Maybe then My Christmas will be white Why don't you all stand to your feet? Let's do this. Ready? One, two, three, let's go! Just like the ones I've never known 